We use feathers for whiskers, and what we do is we strip them. It takes a long time, and it's messy, but they make the best whiskers because they have that curl already. And then what we insert them, see how messy it is? <laughs> Yay. So this That's takes a long time. But Connie and I have been working together for many years. Um, we've done a lot of creatures and animals together. She's an awesome puncher and hair tire. And she's going to help me, when we're done flocking, punch this right here. Because I want a beautiful direction and length to incorporate into this transfer. And then we're going to tie it all in together with the eyebrows, the muzzle, and the ears. And you'll see how that all comes together with all these methods. So... This is basically how we build whiskers. And sometimes I just go like that just to make a final little curve. And then we could cut them so they're not all just one length. They're different lengths. So that's a whisker. And if we want black, we can get feathers in black. Or sometimes if I'm, I don't have no, I black, yeah, you break a lot too. Don't be aggressive like I just was. And I get a Sharpie sometimes. And sometimes I just go like this and paint it black. And then you could get a nice curl doing that and you got black because you know animals have different textures and colors nothing's all one color there's always highlights and shadows so that's how you make it black if you don't if you're in a pinch and you don't have black feathers so this takes a little time it's all in the prep it's the prep that takes the longest but don't get discouraged or you know frustrated it's all part of the process, but it's worth it because when you see at the end, it's going to be so fun, and you're going to say, wow, that's really cool. I did that. So that's just a quick little lesson on whiskers, and then we'll show you how to insert them at the end. This is like the final step of this character right here. So I'm going to start putting some whiskers on, and I usually like to pierce a hole. I kind of use a T-pen because it's a big needle, because the regular needle is not thick enough. So I just kind of pierce a hole in it. It looks kind of crude, but this is the way I do it. This guy looks good. The poor guy needs a haircut. I don't like the human hair. Nope. No human hair. Forget that. That's the good thing about punching. If you don't like it, you could rip it up. So I'm just randomly putting some whiskers on. And I'm basically just piercing the foam. Really. So Deborah Taylor had a question that was, uh, is all of this usually done before it's glued to the underskull? Um, or is it done afterwards? After it's on the me mechanism? Yeah. Um. Usually I like to do the whiskers last because they have to peel back the, the skin to put it over the mechanism, do the glue down. So I actually I like to do the final touches at the end after they do that because it's handled. So yeah, that would ideally be the situation that's best to do it after the fact. And can you talk us through how you're putting those whiskers on a little bit? Yeah, I'm just... I'm taking like a T-pin and I'm piercing it. And then I'm just kind of putting it through where I pierced it. No, those are good. They're good for the thicker whiskers. So I got a few going on and they're different lengths and sizes. I'm going to use a bigger scissor because I want to make a nice hole. It's kind of scary when you look at it like this, but I have a big hole because I got a big whisker in here. See, I still didn't make a big enough hole. But people do it different ways. This is the way I do it. So I got a few whiskers going down, different lengths and sizes. Trim that 
to the wall. Ready to go home. I know it looks crude, but I want to get my whisker in there. Make it till you make it. Huh? Make <laughs> it till you make it. <laughs> it's hard, it's a little more harder because the glue's so um, wet still, and I typically wait until everything's drier. So it's a little. I'm struggling a little bit with the glue, but that's okay. That one got crooked. See, I don't like that one, so I'm going to pull it out. That's the thing, you could pull it out if you don't like it. So, is the um, feather technique the same that, as you would use for uh, porcupine quills? Um, I don't. Would you, I I think that they're asking. Would you, could you do the same technique with with uh, quills instead of feather shafts? Yeah, it just depends on the animal. If I wanted thicker whiskers, I would use like the fatter turkey flats and stuff. So there's different types of feathers for different types of whiskers. I've used paint brushes as whiskers, the brushes for that. In this scenario, we leave the hair a little longer. Yes. <laughs> Cover up that edge. So that looks pretty good for whiskers. Uh, I'm sorry, Deborah. I completely misread that question. Is the technique that you're using for the whiskers the same that you would do for hedgehog quills? Hedgehog quills. I, we recently did one, a hedgehog. <laughs> and well, you did, I didn't. But I sat next to her while she did it. You know what, they used a variety of different things. They used, they molded some oh, needles. That's right, and that's right. They used different things and they molded it and we used those as quills because it was an oversized hedgehog that we did. But sometimes you could find fur that has those kind of tips, like the end break fur I mentioned earlier. It has those kind of tips. But yeah, there's different things you could use. They molded some different types of needles at Legacy. I don't remember. There was like three different types of things they molded. They were, tea, were they like tea pens? There was that tea they pens they molded. There was different different uh, thicknesses and lengths. Still Bless, Bless you. you. <laughs> uh, and as for inserting them into the skin, you would just poke a hole and then slide them in the same way that you're doing with the whiskers. Yeah, it just I'm pier it's basically I'm piercing the skin. Okay.